to Courtney's East versus West with my boy Eddie. Gonna get down to a little business. This is a little rap that I made it off the spot. Here we go. <laughs> what you got? Me? Well, I, don't got, I, I don't got anything, East bro. <laughs> East versus West rap. Because, you know, it's your dose of both coasts. I'm your host, Anthony. And I'm your host, Eddie. I think I think uh, Sammy's the rhymer because he came up with the dose of both coasts. Sammy's just like the the the, the spiritual fan, uh, <laughs> the number one fan of East versus West, the supporter <laughs> of it. Uh, yeah. Today on the on the on the show, we're going to talk about uh, not scary form 2019 versus Burst Gardens uh, 2019. Um, what is it called? Hello Scream. Yeah, Hello Scream at Bush Gardens Williamsburg, to be specific. Oh. Uh, basically, these are two theme parks that are very similar as far as the event goes, um, and they're kind of that's kind of like the knots of the East Coast. And if you look at if you're from in that area of Bush Gardens, then you would say that this was basically the the knots is basically the Bush Gardens of the West Coast. Um, the world's I think I think knots considered the world's first theme park. I don't know how that. I believe so. I don't know. I'm not sure, but I know that they were like one of the first ones for to haunt like create a haunt event. Yeah. yeah, they've been going for almost 50 years. Um, and yeah, we got a lot of things that return this year. I'll skim through my returning mazes, which was the Depths, uh, Paranormal Inc., Dark Entity, Special Ops Infected, Dark Ride, Shadowlands, and Pumpkin Eater. Um, but with Special Ops Infected and uh, Shadowlands, it was its final year. Um, which was kind of a bummer for me for special ops because I really I did dig special ops. It was a uh, interactive zombie maze where you actually got a laser gun and got to kind of shoot the zombies and and you were on a mission to kind of stop this outbreak in in a modern Calico City, which was really cool. So um, interactive. Yeah, it was it was fun. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, Shadowlands, uh, final year, the Suicide Forest in Japan, the the Legend of the Samurai. Uh, it was a very uh, interesting maze, and it will be missed. But uh, I can't wait to see what replaces it. Uh, and of course, our new, our two new mazes that we got in 2019 was Waxworks and Origins: The Curse of Calico. Uh, Waxworks was the story of a uh, kind of a, a mad kind of think of the movie uh, House of Wax if you've ever seen that horror movie. Um, basically, a guy who turns like people and stuff into different creations of wax figures and stuff or goes just above and beyond to make different um wax creatures and figures which is a really cool uh, concept in my opinion i mean you got to go through this is this wax museum was already all kind of going down and fire and flames and stuff and you got to go through this kind of run down burnt down wax museum and you got to see like different exhibits from like the hall of presidents to like a horror section um, it, it was really cool to see that, and then you got to go behind the scenes of how everything was made, and you got to see him, people getting tortured, and it was it was really cool. Um, That's awesome. And then the Origins Curse of Calico, if you guys aren't familiar, of course, with Not Scary Farm, for the last uh, forty plus years at Knotts, the uh, overall kind of icon and theming of Not Scary Farm has always been the witch. So this year, we actually got a backstory on how the witch became the witch, and and how ghost town streets became ghost town uh streets like how they all got cursed and how they all became monsters and stuff which was really cool i think this was probably the maze that took it for me this year um especially going through kind of like the very beginning in this maze where you actually see the trial of sarah marshall and when they try to hang her of course that's when she snaps and curses the town of calico and as you're walking through that maze you're seeing the curse take effect to different uh portions of the maze i mean they have a lot of the iconic set pieces from calico um from calico the town itself which of course they have like the bank um the saloon uh just a bunch of different of the the, the major buildings in there and you got to see calico slowly just turn into just this um this scary monster town, which was really cool. And you got to see a lot of the iconic monsters. There's a lot of Easter eggs uh, referencing a lot of the other scare zones, um, a lot of iconic characters. And uh, I think this maze was just great, especially what was very scary about this maze is at the very end, they actually had this giant, like, life-size, like, I think it, it was about the size of me, a giant just six-foot hand just come out off to the side like it's going to grab you. 
and at points like I would have to stop because it would come out to the point where it was blocking the the path to go, and it would go back in, and I would immediately just hurry up and try to get out because I didn't want that thing touching me. <laughs> nice. So that was really cool. Um, and as far as scare zones went this year, we had uh, Ghost Town Streets, Carnival, uh, Forsaken Lake, and The Hollow with a dance party going on in Fiesta Village. Um, uh, shows we had The Conjurers, which was a magic uh, comedy show. Puppet Up, which was a um, an improv show based around uh, puppets. And then we had the final year of The Hanging, which you wouldn't find out until you actually went to the event and watched the show. So that was a, a big shocker to everyone because The Hanging's been around for like since almost the start of Not Scary Farm. So um, it was a big shocker. But that, that, that was basically the pretty much breakdown of my event. What about yours? Well, before we transfer over into mine, seems like the the event this would be for me like a must do if I was in town around that time of year because that wax house and the the um what's it called the like a uh, suicide force yeah. those are two and I, I can't help but think what what a an original like that would be like at at a larger event like Halloween Hornets but right. I, I would love to to see them in person. And, and sometimes at these uh, smaller events, it's actually better because they get they get by being a little less PC than some of the events that get a little bit more notoriety. No, yeah, definitely. I mean, especially like other originals like Special Ops Infected. I what they did with that maze in general. I mean, to give you a a laser gun to just run around and and shoot zombies. It's I mean, it's a path, obviously, but. To give you this mission and to run around and shoot zombies was just a great idea. And being that it was its final year uh, this past year, um, I am curious to see if they're gonna. And we'll talk a little bit more about this later on in the, in this video. But I want to see if they're gonna if they're gonna bring back that technology for 2020 season, or if they're gonna give it a break and and take it out to another Cedar Fair Park, or uh, I don't know. Because I know they spent a lot of money actually designing these guns. And they're trying to get their money's worth out of it big time. Uh, with Shadowlands, I mean, yeah, the concept does sound really cool. But there was nights that we'd go in that maze where it would be not packed at all. And, you know, I mean, it, it, they gave a good performance, but it was an okay maze. It was decent. Uh, Dark Ride this year actually had a, a few changes to two rooms. They, had a new, they added a new security room, which was really cool, which was also very interactive, too. There was actually a couple buttons you can press that did some things throughout the maze. And then they added a, a gift shop at the end because it was supposed to be like a dark carnival ride. And, of course, usually at the end of uh, most rides at theme parks, they have a gift shop at the end, which was just a fun little touch. Uh, Pumpkin Eater, a returning maze. Uh, it was another okay maze. I mean, it, you know, I mean, I, 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 I anticipate that being one of the mazes that's going to get, uh, that's going to be on its final year this year, probably. Uh, Dark Entities, though, however, this is an alien based maze, which is really cool. Basically, think of Alien uh, meets The Thing. Uh, it's kind of like one of those where you board a spaceship and uh, as you're going through, uh, Alien just escaped one of the pods. And th as you're going throughout this maze, you see the aliens on the walls and you see like, the aliens infecting and killing people, and it, it's just a great concept. I think that was the maze every time that we went through it that scared the hell out of me every time, just because like the way it looked. And is is a uh, not scary a separately ticketed event as not Sperry Farm? Yeah, correct. That is, uh, yeah. It, so you have to buy a separate ticket. However, if you do have an annual pass, you do get discounted um, ticket prices as well. Uh, and they do offer, if you're a, like a diehard fan of the event, like how me and Sammy were last year, they do offer an annual pass, which I think is way more worth it to buy the annual pass rather than a one-day ticket if you're gonna if you live in the SoCal area, because um, with the annual pass, it's only 80 bucks, I believe, and or we paid like 80 bucks or 90 bucks, and then to add parking was another 75. Um, but think about it this way: I mean, you go one night. You go like on a Saturday or something, it costs already like 60, 70 bucks just to go to the event. And then parking itself is 25, any like anywhere from 23 to 25 bucks. So you're, you're getting your money's worth with the parking once you go three times. And you get your money's worth with the annual patch just going twice. So it's like yeah. me and Sammy, we went almost every weekend through the, the you know, at least, at least two or three times a weekend uh, when it was going on. And you know, I mean, we we would just go some nights just to sit down and watch our friends in Ghost Town because you know we've already went through everything and 
we've already seen everything, so it was just cool to just go hang out, especially with all the other diehard fans who would go and, and sit and watch the event, which was really cool. But uh, Minor technical difficulties. Yep, Eddie's app crashed. Sucks. Um, anyway, we were talking about the uh, Knott's Scary Farm Annual Pass system, which is a very good system in my opinion. Uh, but basically, to shorten it up, uh, it, it is worth the money, um, especially if you're going to go multiple nights. Uh, and I, I highly suggest it. And if you do, if you are the person who drives, or if you if you're gonna go with the friend who is driving, I would highly suggest either one of you or or you whatever uh, buy the parking pass with it because it is worth the extra seventy five dollars that it is paid because it's gonna pay for itself. Trust me, parking itself is like anywhere from twenty three to twenty five bucks uh, at the event. So it is worth it just to get that parking pass. Um, that's one thing you have to wor- one last thing you have to worry about. Uh, another thing to also uh, take in mind too, while you're there at Not Scary Farm, um, when you go opening night, buy the uh, orange sipper cup. Well, it was orange this last year. I don't know what color it's going to be this year, but it's a 2020 cup. And basically, with these cups, they're souvenir cups, so yeah, they cost. They, they're a little pricey, but however. Uh, with one of the cups that you buy, it is uh, unlimited refills. So throughout the night, you can just keep refilling it to whatever soda or water that you want. Um, and I think that was also a, a big money saver for me and Sammy as well um, because me and him would constantly uh, have um, drinks all night. And so, yeah, uh, Not Scary Farm annual pass with the parking and the souvenir cup, highly worth it. Uh, so definitely, if you guys get the chance, do that. Um, it is awesome. Alrighty. Okay, so let's transition on over to the East Coast, which is our Bush Gardens Williamsburg house cream. Um, from a perspective of what their what the differences are, one of the first differences is it, that this event is not a separately ticketed event. Um, as the park turns dark, for I think it's around like five thirty, it just transitions into house cream. Um, and they, they have like a, an, a ceremony that goes down and some kind of like bell notifications around the park that let people know that if you're still in here with your little ones and don't want to be in here, now is the time to start transitioning towards the entrance. Um, but they don't kick everybody out and start over. So the, the same ticket that you buy for the daytime is the same ticket that transitions you into Howl Scream. Um, if you're an annual pass holder... Um, you get access to to the event all year round, and basically any of the any of the um, specially ticketed events. There are some that are not like Hallow Scream; they are separately ticketed events. But this particular one is the same thing as your daytime ticket. Um, when it comes down to it, this year we had six houses, and for the most part, they're all really returning houses. Um, the event is something like not Scary Farm. Um, where if you're a fan of haunts and you're in the area, uh, it's definitely a, a good opportunity to indulge, um, and it's not too expensive either. You could get some pretty good deals, just like Anthony was talking about, um, on some bundle tickets, parking, um, drink cups, and things of that nature. I won't get into do t- too many details because it's basically the same thing that Anthony was talking about. Um, but the houses that we're returning this year, we have one that's been around for a really long time, which is Cirque du Sinistro. Um, Cirque du Sinistro, uh, for kind of a brief synopsis, is a circus gone wrong. Um, you get to explore the circus, walk through the circus tents. You have like an opening ceremony where when you when you walk into the first tent, um, you get kind of welcomed to the circus. And um, things get really sinister as they're giving you their opening speech. And they kind of push you out into the circus out of the tent um kind of like go you know go be a, a victim type of thing um it's a, it's a really cool one um it's i've done it so many times now that um you know i i know for the most part everything that's going to happen they change it up a little bit each year not really but they'll add things here tweak that and the other um update some of the, the like set design but at the end of the day it's the same one but it is like a an OG type of house, one that if you go, you got to go through, and it's pretty cool. Um, next, we have Demented Dimensions. Uh, Demented Dimensions is basically it, it. It's you go through this the this like um. It's a a portal that's basically opened up to our world, 
and these otherworldly creatures have come to wreak havoc. Um, it originally was a house, which this, this is the one cool thing. This is the second year that this house has been at the event, and it came originally from the event down in Tampa, the Bush Gardens Tampa. Um, they picked it up and brought it over to, to Williamsburg. So um, that, that was one thing that got me excited about it. When I went through it the first time, it was probably – if not the best, one of the better houses that year. Um, but this year around, it it, it kind of was just like revisiting the same exact thing. Um, Dystopia. Dystopia is another house that was a newer house. I think it's only been with the event now two years. Dystopia is um, basically, it, it's this facade of what a utopia would be like. And you see how people are being brainwashed into thinking that they live in a utopic world. Um, you, you run, you go into like this room where there's all these people that seem like they're happy, but they're actually wearing like a mask. That's kind of like showing them an image of what they think they're living, but they don't know that they're actually just sitting in a room being tricked into this utopic feeling. That's, um, that's twisted. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a it's a twisted house. And this year, um, when I went to to House Cream, I went for the annual pass holder event, and I went by myself. And I walked through. I, I went like right when they opened up, and I walked through this through this house by myself. There was it wasn't like going to Halloween Horror Nights where you're going through this conga line. There literally was barely anybody ahead of me and barely anybody behind me. There was huge space, so I was walking through the whole entire thing solo. Um, and I don't know if that's the reason why. Um, but it ended up being a really scary, uh, walk through. Yeah. <laughs> I walked through it twice during that trip or during that, uh, that visit once when I got there and then once when I was leaving and both times it was really creepy to walk through it by myself. The other houses, when I was walking through them for the most part, I'd be walking in with like a group ahead of me that was pretty close. This one I got to walk through without anybody really just going through a haunted house by my damn self, which was pretty freaking creepy. I haven't <laughs> done that in a really long time. <laughs> That sounds like fun. Yeah, it was cool. And you, you go through like these different like uh, not facades, but kind of, uh, I guess, scenes in, in the house that present utopia in different ways. And then kind of you go through a utopic room like where you see the people and what they think that they're seeing. And then you go through a room that's kind of like behind the scenes where it's like all like, you know, fenced off and things look dilapidated and things of that nature. Um, and kind of you see kind of the the evil people behind it. Um, cool. Yeah, it's a cool one. And then next we have Frostbite. This one is a um, basically kind of like a a frozen uh, Ice King. Reminds me of uh, if you watch Game of Thrones, the Night yeah. King kind of kind of approach. You got like all these like um, people that are that are like frozen, but they're entities that like walk around. Um, and it's, it's set in like a, uh, like a frosted castle is the best okay. way to kind of describe it. Like uh, the walls are like frozen brick, um, or bricks made out of ice. Um, but this one in itself kind of, it came on the scene as like the new big thing about like three years ago. Wow. And, wasn't received well that year and i don't think it's ever been really hyped up after that but they keep bringing it back uh, i guess it's just the nature of a lower budgeted event yeah uh, right and then um after that we have lumber hack which is also another one that's been around probably just as long as cirque de sinistro this one's really cool it's like a kind of like a backwoods family that that um that that lives like in a cabin and you're you're walking through the backwoods this one is an outdoor house so you're exposed to the elements you're walking through like dirt um there's like chainsaw um axe murderers walking around and like chasing you and popping out of nowhere um th this is one of the ones though that whenever i've done a video going there the actors that actually are working that that house have always commented um, and there's like, there's a guy named like outhouse Joe or something like that, which basically what there is, is there's, there's like a porter potty, like a wooden, um, redneck porter potty in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and 
and he's hiding in there and he'll like open the door and like water will squirt like like something pissed on you or shit on you oh god and then he'll like come out and like say something and then like slam the door back shut um so that one's always been a, a cool one to go and like interact with the actors yeah um and then last but not least, we have the one that was supposed to be the new one this year. And I say new one because really it wasn't that new. This was the 20th year anniversary as well. Okay. Um, so, or no, it, it was the 21st year, actually. I, I'm lying. So this house was there for the 20, 20th year anniversary, which was the prior year, uh, 2018. Yeah. And it was called Vault 20 or Vault XX, whatever they wanted to call it, right? Um, they changed it this year to Vault Overtaken, and the cool thing about this event, and kind of uh, one of the things that I really appreciate about this event, is that they have an icon, um, and their most famous icon is actually coincidentally named Jack. Nice. Um, yeah, but Jack is a pumpkin head. Okay. Um, instead of a clown at this event, and Vault Overtaken was basically the the Vault Twenty coming back to the event, but this time it was overtaken by Jack and he let all of the creatures out of their cages. Nice. Um, yeah. And basically it was, it was a walk down memory lane. Cause it's all the, the like characters and creatures from years past. And basically the way that they kind of marketed it was they were all dying to meet you again or dying to see you. Nice. Um, overall, um, a decent lineup, you know, when it, when it comes to, uh, an event that has a lot of returning houses. It's always about kind of like just getting your, your feet wet and enjoying it um, for what it is, not critiquing it too much because once again, you're, if, if you're returning year to year, you're familiar with a lot of the things that you're going to experience. Um, and then we, we have scare zones for the scare zones. All the scare zones are exactly the same, the same, yeah. but when it comes to scare zones, I really do enjoy the scare zones at, at Howl Scream. The actors are really engaging um, they, they always are looking for people to, to interact with. And of course, if you're walking around with a gimbal and a camera, um, they, they like a little bit of attention and I'm sure they, they always look on YouTube to find the video where they interact oh, yeah. with that particular Definitely. individual. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to scare zones, we, we had four, which was Axe Alley, um, Axe Alley kind of goes hand in hand with Lumberhack. It's just kind of like these like backwoods people with axes. Um, and you see some saws and blades around as props. Fool's yeah. Court is um, basically you got some like court gestures and whatnot, um, but they look like wicked um, walking around. Um, and then you got the Garden of Soul, which is kind of like a Dia de los Muertos. Um, it's set in the Italy area of the park. Um, and you just got a bunch of people walking around looking like, uh, kind of like skeletons and whatnot. And they got a lot of like cool, like glow in the dark colors. It's a really dark scare zone. Um, and then last but not least, you got the first scare zone, which is actually right when you enter the park, which is Ripper's Row. Um, it's, it's a scare zone where you have like a, a headless horseman and a headless lady walking around. Um, you got a bunch of people kind of like popping out of nowhere with like, with like butcher's knives and things like that, but it's set in england and it's based off of jack the ripper so at your event do you have uh is there stilt walkers um is there still walkers no no there's what, not what what about sliders do they have sliders there or no no they don't have that either oh wow okay um because yeah. i know over here i mean sliding originated really in california I mean, that's where it kind of really started. Actually, at Not Scary Farm, a lot of I've talked to a lot of the people that were there from the start of sliding, which was uh, it was some really good conversations and stuff, which is really cool. Um, Decayed Brigade out here, which is a, a big sliding group, um, and and SoCal is uh, you know they're the ones that really kind of put it in the main picture as and and kind of popularized it uh, more um, than what it is. I mean, what it was and um, now you're seeing a bunch of different groups coming out and, and a lot of people do it more uh, but not Scary Farm, Queen Mary and Six Flags Magic Mountain to my knowledge are the ones that I know in, in SoCal that include sliding um, which is a very cool scare in my opinion I mean uh, if, you, if you get to see it firsthand, and if you ever do come out here we're going to have to go to not Scary Farm just so I can show you it firsthand. 
but if you ever see it firsthand, it's just such a unique skill to to these scare actors that they have in their arsenal because a lot of the times, I mean, this is not some this is not an easy thing to do with sliding. I mean, you, you, everybody thinks you can just throw on knee pads and get some slider shoes and clacker gloves and just go out there and do it. I mean, no, it takes a lot of cardio and and really just you have to know how to position yourself. You have to know when to stop. You have to know uh, distancing and stuff. So I mean, it's it's a it's a unique skill. But the reason why I bring that up is because I mean, I, I would think like an event like this. I mean, especially sliders would be a unique thing to just throw in this event. Just have people go out there and start sliding. But yeah, um, now they they've never had it at this event, but I have seen sliding a, a few years back when I went to the uh, Six Flags Haunted event. There is yeah. uh, Six Flags Maryland. Yeah. Here and I, I went there, and they they I remember seeing the sliding. I, the they would pop out of nowhere, and it it would it would make for some pretty good like jump scares outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess it depends on the people who do it too, because I I know some very talented sliders who get really creative with how they do it, and I mean, you just I mean it, the knee pads too as well. I mean, not only are they you can use for sliding, but they you can use that for different scare tactics as well, which is fun. So, but uh, so. Sounds like it was a solid event, and there was a couple mages that when you were telling me that I was just really into. It would be something that I would definitely want to check out, especially because I really want to... Uh, the the long-term goal eventually down the line is to travel the world to see different haunts, especially out in like uh, like like Germany and, and Scotland and all that. I, I've seen some like really badass haunts that are out there. So that would be like one of my goals. Um, shout out to my boy Kevin, actually, who showed me a lot of these uh, different haunts in the kind of overseas area but it would be fucking dope to go out there and just kind of see those haunts and, and see what they're like and stuff but that's that's kind of the long-term goal is eventually if the channel does get any bigger or should i say when the channel gets bigger yeah um, man don't sell yourself short uh when the channel gets bigger i would do a lot i want to do a lot more traveling as far as uh going to different haunts and checking them out um, that way I can have a legit busy haunt season. It'd be, it would be cool, like every weekend in haunt season, I'm going somewhere, traveling somewhere different just to experience another haunt, which would be very fun. Um, and that's going to start with uh, Universal Studios Orlando, hopefully this year, for the 30th. So yeah, That'd be nice, man. Are you, are you coming down with uh, SoCal, maybe? I, I'm thinking about it. That way we all have uh, kind of... Are you going to be there that weekend? Um, so typically I go for opening weekend. Um, so the, from what SoCal is saying, he's going to be there the second weekend. So I don't think so, but I, I guess we'll see. Nothing, nothing has been set in stone yet, at least not on my end. Yeah. You might have I to know. change that just so you can meet up with us. I know, but I think he, he said that he's doing it because he likes to go to the opening weekend, which is the same thing with me. Like the last three years I've gone to opening weekend of Halloween Horror Nights. It started with that one year when I did yeah uh, media for universal and like ever since then it's it's the the events a little bit different that first weekend it's oh it's, yeah you know so yeah, yeah. i don't know we'll, we'll see who knows the given the current state of things the event might even open up a week later um <laughs> if they do a preview night on thursday again this year at, at horror nights in our and hollywood there could be a ch oh wait but universal orlando usually opens like a week earlier than Hollywood. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what what uh, date SoCal was looking at, um, but that's what he said in the in the group chat. Because I remember that, but I remember last year that was the that was the deal. They opened like a week or two just before Hollywood. So if that's yeah, the thought, case, I think last year we opened up way before you guys. It was like two or three weeks before you guys. Yeah, but, that's, um, if that's the case. I might be able to pull it off. Yeah this this year we open up on the tenth, which is a Thursday. It's the second Thursday of of September. Okay, so if like I go second... out, so you're gonna you're gonna be there that whole weekend, then, aren't you? Yeah, I usually go Wednesday to Monday. Okay, yeah, I might head out if I do decide to go. I might try to go uh, head out there Friday. I might leave Thursday night, get there Friday morning, sleep on the plane, and uh, stay there for the weekend. Leave uh, Monday morning or Monday evening, whenever. Yeah. Uh, to kind of like backtrack, so with your not scary farm, um, I, I guess what what would be your overall rating of the event last year? I guess let's do one to ten. 
Uh, I'm going to go, uh, honestly, a 9.5 out of 10 because I had a lot of fun this last year getting to meet a lot of people. And if anyone watched Character Appreciation Month, a lot, pretty much all of our guests outside of a couple um, were from Not Scary Farm. So we got to meet a lot of um, very talented scare actors uh, from Ghost Town mostly. Uh, we had, I think, one in Carnival, one in Forsaken, and a couple in The Hollow. But um, Ghost Town was where we were hanging out. We've actually donned a nickname for Ghost Town since we hang out in a certain area, uh, which is actually known as – they they call it Kmart. And there was a bench on that little alleyway that we would hang out, so we were known as the Kmart bench warmers. But we decided to change it to the uh, KSF bench warmers because we kind of bench warm all around Not Scary Farm. But um, I think it was just cool to interact with the monsters this year, especially since uh, they started knowing who we were. And I'm excited to see what – this coming year is going to look like, especially because not now a lot of people know who we are, and since we hang out with them like on a regular basis, I mean, it, it's going to be fun to just see that interaction. It's going to be there, and uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, but overall, nine point five out of ten, man. I mean, the mazes were solid. I mean, there was nights where I mean we would go and we would get into like maybe two or three mazes that we really wanted to go through. Um, you know, Puppet Up was hilarious. That we would try to see that at least once a night if we can. Um, I think the only that's what's keeping that point five from being a ten out of ten was the hanging. Being that I'm a huge fan of the hanging, uh, and to see it was this last year kind of bummed me out because that's kind of half the reason I also go to Not Scary Farm because the hanging show was pretty much like a Bill and Ted type parody show, um, and they're taking that away, which I don't know what they're going to replace that with. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I, I other than that, the event was solid. Um, I do miss it every day. I wish uh, I can go back. Time and time again, I love the smell of the fog. I don't know. For some reason, and, and it, it might just be me, but certain you know, events have certain smells that you know when you go to that event, like and you smell that smell, it's just like you know you're at this event. Like it just it, yeah. for some reason it's it's like a home, you know what I mean? Like not scary farm for me mostly was fog because everywhere they had was fog. So every time I smelled the fog machine, I was just like, Oh fuck, I'm here, I'm home, you know, and Horror Nights, it's always like the chainsaws because they use chainsaws. Yep. You know? Yeah, you, hear, you smell like the, the gas. Yeah. No, but you also smell the fog. Yeah. Uh, uh, and the Horror Nights fog has like a distinct smell as well. But, yeah. um, okay, uh, so you, a 9.5 out of 10 is a really good rating. Yeah. Uh, I can't say the same thing for my event, not to say that it wasn't a great event. Um, this year I went to it probably like about like five times, I think. Um. And I, I always enjoy it because I'm an annual pass holder, so I, I get to go to the annual pass holder event, and that's always a cool way of experiencing the event. Um, it, it's not as packed, not as busy, so you really get to go through everything and take your time. And like I was telling you, sometimes you get to actually walk through a whole entire haunted house all on your own because it's not as big of, a, of an event as Halloween Horror Nights is. Yeah. But if I had to give it a rating um, out of 10, I would probably give it like a solid 7. And okay. I, I think I think that's a really good rating. Given, oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, given the the budget of the event, um, that's not much lower than what I would give like a Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah, uh, I, I don't even think I'd give a Halloween Horror Nights a nine point five to be honest with you, um, just because I, I I would be a little bit critical on the event just because I love it so much. Yeah. Um, but a a solid seven, you know, given that it it's basically. Uh, a, a copy of the event year by year. I, yeah. I think they do they do the best with what they got. Yeah. And as the the events grow in popularity, they'll be able to, to change it up a little bit. And I, I think I could see that in the future of Bush Gardens now that it's been past twenty years, changing things up a little bit. Yeah. Um, I don't know about ever seeing like intellectual properties, but just a little bit more creative um, houses as well as maybe a little bit more money into the the set design yeah. uh, would be cooler. And they only have six houses. And to be honest, I was able to get through the six houses pretty quick. So maybe uh, adding a few more houses as well. Yeah. I will say this, though, with Not Scary Farm. Um, the, the, I think what, what really what really why i put it at like a 9.5 as well not only did we meet a lot of people and the interactivity was just amazing and learning the stories of these characters in ghost town was really fun to do especially because we kind of knew uh one person going into uh the ghost town streets and then after the event was over i mean 
we've gotten to learn so much of the backstory of these characters. And to this day, if you follow their actual Ghost Town accounts on Twitter or on Instagram, every now and then they'll they'll jab at each other because there is storylines within Ghost Town that was happening that are, are you know with certain characters, which I thought was really cool. Um, one of the most notable things, and it's on my uh, if you guys will go to my channel and watch my Not Scary Farm. Um, um, compilation that I made. Uh, at the very end of that compilation, there is the assassination, or the not the assassination, but the the death of the she wolf, which was um, a character that we know personally, very good friend of the channel. Um, and uh, with that death, it was really it was really cool because the the night prior to that, uh, her running partner at Not Scary Farm was a girl uh, who's also a, a girl that we know. Her name's Ruth. Uh, she plays the orphan at Not Scary Farm. Um, very good friend of ours, and uh, her and my other friend were running partners together. So uh, the night before that, she actually it was her la on her last night, uh, the orphan's last night. Actually, the she wolf uh, went to go kill the orphan. Which, w if you guys follow the lore, I mean, this is stuff you got to really talk to the characters about and figure out on your own. But if you if you follow the lore between the two, actually, uh, she wolf like prior to the curse actually does kill the orphan the little girl that she takes care of so it was really cool to see that story come to life at the uh, event especially when it was uh roost last night at the event and they actually brought that to life at the very end of the night where she came out of nowhere and just killed the orphan on the following night uh since it was the final weekend um they actually did something that was really cool where they uh killed the she wolf the uh judas the barber and a bunch of the townsfolk came together and they held down the she wolf kind of accused her of the crimes of what she did and um killed her right in front of everybody which was really cool so it's it's moments like that that really bring this event to life on top of that with the mazes uh much like other events uh there is really no black walls at all like they literally detail every room wall to wall like corner to corner like there is not one detail that is missed they like that's what i really enjoy about this is that yeah these these mazes are reused and and they do keep coming back year after year but i think i i think i'd rather have an event that brings in like two or three every year then that way they had a bigger budget to actually put in like if you saw go on youtube after this after we're done recording this and look up the origins curse of calico maze how detailed that maze is and how much special effects they use in that maze is beyond me like i think it is because that they reuse the same properties they have they have more money to actually accomplish a heavy special effects maze look up waxworks too i mean it was it was just insane to uh go through these mazes and see the detail put into these mazes so i think that's why the event is ranked very high for me it's just because they put a lot of detail and time and effort into these mazes and the fact that they do reuse them i mean it is just kind of insane uh uh, the amount of detail they put in and the storylines that they have with characters in Ghost Town and when you figure out more I think that was a good opportunity when we did Character Appreciation Month that we learned so much from every character that we had on especially a lot of the heavy hitter characters and to learn more of their backstories and who they are taking that knowledge and applying it to the event this next year, it's going to be fun Yeah um, No, I'm definitely going to check out some of these mazes. No black walls, that's crazy I mean, Yeah, I no I don't know. What I mean, black I think with are, Waxworks but... there was a, a long transition black wall, but I mean, it was just it was at the very end of the maze. It was an exit, and they were like blowing this air effect at you, which kind of it was a it was a fun little scare. But I mean, that's really I mean for black walls, that's really it though. I mean, they really detail every little nook and cranny and corner of these damn mazes, which yeah, I love. Black walls are, are over here on the east coast. I know. <laughs> well, at least at uh, Horror Nights. Black walls are like jump scares for you guys. <laughs> It's like, ah, not another Black one. Walls, black <laughs> Walls, the maze 2020 prediction for HHN called it. Yeah, right? It's just going to be all Black Walls. You're going to hear ACDC's back in black throughout the entire maze. Yeah. Uh, the, the maze is going to be called Black Walls Music by Slash. Music by Slash. <laughs> 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 or, right, but, right, actually, I mean, that. yeah, I mean, Not Scary Farm, <laughs> it's very, I think it was probably our favorite event this last year. Um, definitely. Just because we had a good time, hands down. Well, uh, from there, transitioning into kind of a lot of conversation that we're hearing about Halloween Horror Nights is, you know, is it going to happen? This, that, and the other. Um, I I'm assuming Not Scary Farm, uh, just like basically any other theme park or large, basically, establishment in the, in the U.S. right now is closed down, right? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we all know why. We don't need to get into that conversation too much. But uh, as far as, like, 
them opening up, um, is there any inkling that that might not be the case this year? So I haven't heard anything on Not Scary Farm yet. I have heard that a lot of theme parks might start opening at J- in June. Yeah. Um, and that's also a very good sign for these events. Now, if you guys have been following um, theme park news lately, I mean, Universal has ordered permits on, I think, both coasts to continue construction on all their projects so they can still be set into coming into on time. Uh, that also includes construction permits for Halloween Horror Nights. So, and... Uh, I'm going to save this one for tomorrow, but there was a certain picture that actually went around for uh, HHN Orlando, which we'll save for another episode, um, which is going to be a good episode. So tune in next week as well. Um, but uh, so we, we do know construction is still happening. And John Murdy actually came out on Twitter and confirmed that construction was happening at HHN Hollywood uh, because uh, I think a fan asked if if it was if the construction has started, and he said, "Oh yeah, I forgot. Since the parks are closed, you guys haven't been able to take videos or anything of the construction that already has started." So uh, it looks like HHN and everything is still going back on track. Now I have heard some details that uh, you know a lot of people, uh, especially with theme parks, have. Get, been given permission to actually start taking temperatures and stuff to let people in the parks um, uh, just just as an awareness. And I have also been reading that if they're going to op- reopen parks, uh, face max may be required as they are right now. It is a law right now in the, in the United States, or at least in the state of California right now it is, um, to go out with a mask just for uh, prevention of, of passing the virus on. Uh, so... If the events do come this year, and I'm talking all Haunt events, uh, here in SoCal we got uh, Haunted Hayride, Queen Mary Dark Harbor, Not Scary Farm, Halloween Horror Nights, Six Flags. If these events do go on this year, I think ticketing will be very limited per night uh, to avoid uh, enormous crowds, um, especially with everything going on. I think we will have to be... uh, they're gonna check. They're gonna check temperatures, which will cause a very long line. Um, and in my opinion, what I what that's what I think. Um, and I think we're gonna have to be wearing face masks throughout the event, which will be the first time in any haunt, um, like pretty much history, that they're actually gonna let you wear a mask of some sort at the event. Okay. Not not true. Mickey's not so scary. The kids could dress up. Oh, that's that, that, <laughs> that's that's a given. Come on. They could wear the whole entire Halloween costume. What are you talking I'm about? I'm talking about legit These Halloween guys. events that are freaking <laughs> PG-13 or higher. Okay, okay. You got to be but a little bit specific. That's just what I've been hearing on the news, at least, as far as the theme park opening. So with the news, of course, of theme parks potentially opening in June, um, at least here in the state of California, and I believe that's that goes for Florida, too, and, and pretty much everywhere with theme parks, really. Yeah. Maybe, depending on who's, who it is, I guess – that is also looking good for haunt season because yeah. since the theme parks will be open leading into haunt season, that would be a good good sign. Yeah, and, and given that they've already kind of, well, not kind of, they've lost a ton of money being closed for so so long, the amount of revenue that they produce on a daily basis is ridiculous. And the, the haunt season, at least for like Universal Studios, is huge, and I'm sure it is for Not Scary Farm as well. Maybe not so much for Bush Gardens because over here it gets really cold. Yeah. So the amount of people that actually go to the park during that time is is a lot less. Even on a busy day for Bush Gardens Howl Scream, it's not that busy like it would be at a a Halloween Horror Nights. And I'm sure probably not Scary Farm the lines probably get pretty ridiculous as well. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong, there'll be long lines, but just not as long. So I don't think it, it it impacts them as much, or it's not as much of a revenue bringer for them. But parks like Universal Studios, Not Scary Farm, Hollywood, and uh, Orlando, I'm sure if they're able to open, that event's going to happen. And yeah. what I can say about Bush Gardens is the fact that it's not a separately ticketed event. If they're open, the event's going to happen as well because yeah. it just makes sense. They'll probably bring back exactly the same exact houses that they brought last year just given the, the current circumstances and being that they are missing out on revenue now. And that's not a huge revenue bringer, so they're not going to invest in making those houses better. They're just going to open them up the way that they were the previous year so they could at least draw some people in. Definitely. stay in the, in the late night. So I, I, I think haunt season's well on its way. Um, 
there there is some rumors of construction out there. I know that uh, I did see John Murdy did confirm that they they are doing construction in Hollywood, and from what I hear through the grapevine in Orlando, I mean there there's a there's something circulating around which I'm not too sure about, but the the people at Universal Studios, at least some of the insiders, have basically confirmed that construction in Orlando usually doesn't start about up till like June anyway. Mm-hmm. And there has been no news of delays for the Halloween Horror Nights construction. So we're Definitely. we're well ahead of the construction. It doesn't even start around this time of the year. So um that that's a, a good sign and yeah it looks like everybody's going to be opening and or at least the projected date is june things seem to be getting better too so um i i think we're we're going to be good but it's just going to be a different experience which in the case of the larger events may be a positive those conga lines um i don't think they they help the scare at all so yeah. being able to eliminate those conga lines for some people that are actually looking to get a little bit more of a thrill out of these events, um, that might be exactly what they get. Definitely. Uh, transitioning from that into, uh, the, of course, more into the 2020 season, uh, what are your hopes for the event at uh, Hollow Scream this year, man? What do you want to uh, see? It, really, my hopes at this point in time is that they are able to invest a little bit of money and maybe add a new house to the six line six house lineup and maybe make it a seventh house Um, and some something that is not recycling so i I want it to be a seventh house because if it's a a new sixth house usually what ends up happening is they recycle items yeah right so keep the current six houses and add a seventh house which has all original new props that i haven't seen before um, that's what I would like to see, and and I think that's a reasonable expectation. Uh, given circumstances, maybe it may not happen, but that's that's what I would like to see Bush Gardens do as far as like the next step in the the progression of their event. Definitely, um, I think over here at Not Scary Farms, since they're really transitioning to this whole storyline of origins and and really wanting to tie everything in, looking like. Uh, especially with the Easter eggs given to us in Origins the Curse of Calico, kind of referencing each scare zone and everything. Um, I would really love to see, leading up to the 50th anniversary, the entire park become kind of one uh, to tie into a whole lore and story. Um, Starting off with the mazes that left Shadowlands and Infected Special Ops, um, I have two uh, things I would love to see for Infected Special Ops. Um, uh, kind of the replacement for that. Uh, one of them would be, in, uh, at least, uh, this would be also affecting another maze if they if they do bring it back, but the maze Dark Entities is an alien-based maze. I would love to see them take the special ops technology with the guns and everything and incorporate that into Dark Entities so it can be like an alien kind of shooter game. Uh, if you guys played, like, Dead Space or if you guys played, like, uh, Alien Isolation, you know, it'd be something like that, which would be really cool. I would really love to see that. And as far as the maze replacing Special Ops Infected goes, I would really love to see something on the line of werewolves. Um, I'm a huge werewolf fan, and to kind of see uh, hopefully a, a werewolf maze come to the event. Uh, I think it's been a while since we've had a werewolf maze at the event as well. Um, so that'd be really cool, especially to kind of expand that lore of, of werewolves and stuff, which would be really fun. Um, as far as what I think for Shadowlands goes, since it's in the Carnival area in back of Accelerator... Um, I would love to see them do a Carnival kind of related maze, kind of maybe explaining the lore of Carnival and how it got started and, and leading up to kind of the curse of, of Sarah Marshall and how that affected Carnival, which would be really cool. Um, so I would love to see that. Uh, for mazes that I think might be leaving this year, which would probably be Paranormal Inc., uh, Dark Entities, uh, and Pumpkin Eater, uh, I think... Uh, for I, I think these are going to be the last years for those mazes, especially Paranormal and Pumpkin Eater. Uh, Par- I know Pumpkin Eater hasn't been uh, getting the numbers it should be getting. Um, it's always it was always a really short line when we went, so that I can see that leaving next year and maybe kind of introducing something new to kind of relate more to the Hollow Scare Zone and maybe give that more of a backstory and tying it into that whole origin storyline. Um, and Paranormal Inc. Uh, a very good maze as well. You're going through like a ghost show. 
uh, and you're at this like a sane asylum, and you're and you're you know you're investigating this asylum, and then as you're as you're doing an investigation, um, you know all hell breaks loose, and then you go through the asylum, and you start seeing all these different demons and ghosts and everything everywhere. Um, ironically, I don't know if you know, uh, TLV recently did a, a a live stream with um, a guy named Forrest. Um, he's actually the face, one of the faces of that maze is, uh, of that maze. He's actually in like a lot of the videos and he was on the, a lot of the promotional art for that. He was in, he's in the beginning, uh, queue of that, uh, maze, which I find, um, awesome, but paranormal, I would love to see one of two things happen with that. If they're going to get rid of paranormal, uh, I would love to see them bring back, bring that concept back, but a new episode where you're in a new location. Or yeah. just a whole new uh, original maze in general, which would be really cool. So those are kind of my thoughts and predictions for 2020. I, I, I see us uh, two new mazes for sure we're getting in 2020 and uh, maybe three on its last year probably. So yeah. Also, what's really cool before we uh, continue, what's really cool that they started doing this year for the uh, farewell mazes is they started making these exclusive pins. I don't know if you can see that. Um, oh, that's, that's for Shadowlands, and it has the dates it was off, you know, in thing, and that one's for Special Ops. Um, and there's the, there's the exclusive pens. They basically say uh, 2014 to 2019 headshots only for not uh, for Shad or um, Special Ops, and uh, for Shadowlands it's 2016 to 2019. It says live by the live by the sword, die by the sword, which was their uh, of course. Um, little slogans for each of the mazes they're called not uh, scary farm legend pins which uh they're on little gravestones that are really cool so that's another thing too i'm hoping that since with the more mazes shutting down and coming down i can get more of those pins i want to start collecting those those are really cool all right those look cool as hell so those pins are for when when they're retired yeah so this was the first year that they started doing them and they announced it at the knots media event uh last year um and uh, so when the maze pretty much retires, they put their operation dates from when it started to when it ends, and then their little slogan on it, and then, of course, their logo as well, which is really cool. So um, a paranormal one would be cool, a dark entities one would be cool, and a pumpkin eater one would be really cool. So I can add more to my collection. Nice. And uh, one thing um, that, I, that I wanted to say real quick, kind of side noting, um, for those who are listening and uh, those who have been following us the, the past couple of weeks, I, I, I do want to say thanks because we have gotten, uh, I was looking at both of our channels, uh, probably the most amount of consistent views that we've gotten in a while. Uh, yeah. I know that this particular video isn't going to be like our last two because unfortunately there's no IPs, so there's no speculating that we could do. Speculating yeah. tends to be a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun to do, but we can still have fun with some other ideas. So like we've said in the past couple of videos, if you guys do have any ideas, make sure to comment down in the, well, the comments below and let us know where you're going to I will also say this though, my not scary farm content and your bush gardens content actually do get a lot of, uh, good ratings on it too. Cause a lot of people like to do that. So I got my last not scary farm speculation video is already like at 400 views. So, Oh shoot. Well, yeah, maybe, yeah you know what? Uh, funny enough, I, I think actually my, my bush gardens, uh, exclusive like videos like I'm looking at yeah last year when I went to Howl Scream yeah it's one of my highest view videos actually so yeah so maybe this content does really well I don't I, I yeah. don't know so we'll see hopefully you guys enjoy it just as much as our last two videos but I saw how well we did between between the two channels and the amount of views that we got I was pretty impressed uh, a, a, as far as the podcast goes at least yeah. uh, our, our podcast has been growing in popularity, and we are getting a lot more views than we did when we first started. What, what episode is this, 2020? This is episode 19, and we got a special announcement at, after yeah. you're done for episode 20. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so episode 19. So 19 episodes in, and now we're showing a consistent like viewer base of 100 plus, I could say, easily. All, all of my podcast videos, East versus West, have done 100 plus. And uh, a good amount of them have done well over 200. So um, I, I enjoy seeing that that growth. So the, the people who are consistently following us, thank you. Those who are tuning in for the first time, we do a little bit of, of everything here, comparing uh, events on both coasts. The only podcast where you get a dose of both coasts. Dose of both coasts. So with that being said, um, before we log off for today, 
episode 20 it's a it's our 20th episode and we wanted to do something big for 20 episodes um prior before we i think we've only had uh losh on the show so far right he was like the only yep. guest one and so <clears throat> losh uh losh tv has been on the show so to do something special uh we've been in a group chat uh the last like couple months um that was actually started by our, our friends over at fractured compass and um it was an amazing group chat to bring all of us creatives together just to talk about you know news events uh planning trips it's been really cool i mean even if we have some personal stuff we want to talk about i mean we're all there for each other which has been an amazing experience to just kind of see all that um and next week uh this is something that i've been wanting to do for some time uh and we're finally going to do it uh, we're going to film it tomorrow, but it will be out uh, next week. Uh, and this is going to be a big collaboration among five channels, man. This is I think this is going to be – this is probably one of the biggest collaborations in our little group of, you know, many YouTubers that, that's ever happened, really. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be me and Eddie, Knights of Horror and Eddie, Eddie Tainment. Um, and then we're also going to include uh, SoCal Exploring, Lost TV, and Zombie Chris. And we're going to do an episode of East versus West. Uh, we're going to be talking about HHN um, and and what what, it, what we're thinking about what's going on for the future of it. We're going to talk about uh, some construction rumors that we've been seeing. Um, and we're going to break all that down. I want to hear everyone's thoughts on on the event. Uh, also, shout out to our boys, uh, Lost TV and SoCal Exploring. They actually started a new series on SoCal Exploring. And we were giving them a lot of shit last weekend, but... You know, we, 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 we love those channels to you know to death. They're they're great channels. They produce amazing content. Yeah. And they they started their own podcast. It's called Horror Nights Unscripted. Um basically it's like the same concept with East versus West, except they're just gonna be focusing a lot on Horror Nights, um, with Losh and um SoCal Exploring, especially because with SoCal Exploring starting to transition to uh doing a lot of Orlando content as well to try to uh to get that out there to get you guys prepared um because i know he's going to be tri taking a big trip out to orlando this year so good for him but uh definitely check out horror nights unscripted as well it's a very good series and they do shout us out in the beginning um which was really nice of them to do so um i'm excited for this crossover this is going to be yeah. a, a good one this is going to yeah, be a fun it'll one. Be nice to bring them on and yeah i i almost forgot to to shout them out as well the the first episode was really good, and I, I went ahead and I told them, I said, hey, you guys have some chemistry, so something that you guys may want to may want to consider. And we played around joking, jokingly saying, like, hey, you guys can't take the name, though. We already got that. Yeah. Uh, because it, it is a one East Coast and one West Coast um, host. So yeah. uh, they got a, a similar approach to us, but I do think they're going to they're gonna be different because they, they are trying to do that unscripted type of approach. You yeah. and I, we tend to try to... Come up we with have a, a layout. I wouldn't say we're scripted, but we have we, we do discuss what we're gonna talk about and yeah. we kinda we kinda improvise it from there. So Yeah, we, we try to have a format that we we terribly divert off of mostly yeah. <laughs> and have some huge tangents in our conversation that kind of I always try to try to try to bring the conversation back in. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um so yeah, we're we have our unscripted nature, but these guys are truly going unscripted into each podcast and their first podcast um, I, I thought the the chemistry was great. Their second podcast did great as well, and they they were doing um, some some interesting speculation and conversation around Halloween Horror Nights. So yeah, uh, yeah, shout out to those guys. Thanks for shouting us out as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we look forward to having them on the podcast, having this big collab, big East versus West collab, because we're going to have some additional West Coast and some additional East Coast supporters on this next episode the 20th hey man it's gonna be a fun one man i've been looking forward to doing something especially with zombie chris i've collabed with losh and so this morning it's always fun to collab with them but i've never collabed with zombie chris so this is gonna be a fun one to get us all together and in, in one little chat and and talk horror nights man this is gonna be very fun so thank you guys everyone for watching before we also sign off we have merchandise on our store link is in the bio our new east versus west shirt is out along with the east versus west stickers and hoodies tank tops women's t-shirts long sleeve t-shirts it's all there go check it out if you can go support the show if you guys want um i'm definitely going to be buying mine pretty soon so that will be fun to have and wear and rock that everywhere um so go support the show by buying some east versus west merch if you guys have the extra cash but if not a subscribe will always do for us and a like and a comment down below to think to hear what you guys thought about the uh the, the episode uh be sure to subscribe to edutainment as well uh producing content out in the east coast as well so uh definitely something you uh you should do 
But uh, that is going to do it this week for East versus West. Uh, your dose of both coasts. Of course, uh, leave some comments below if you guys want to hear us talk about anything related to uh, theme parks or a horror event or, or whatever. Uh, if as long as it's East versus Coast related, uh, East versus West related, uh, we will talk about it. So thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode, and we will see you guys next week. Deuces.